What is unethical as F, but is extremely common practice in the business world, paying invoices late, especially big companies, that pay a few months late, it kills small business, and seems to be quite normal here in the UK. My father did some work on a solicitor's building, and they didn't pay, my mother noticed after a month they hadn't paid, and went up to have a word, the receptionist said that's fine, I'll get it sorted, and we'll post the check to you. My mother said I live across the road, I can see my house from here, I'll just take the check. The receptionist said I'll need to get the owner, to write the check, my mother said I can wait. The receptionist went back to work, my mother waited, the receptionist did nothing further to get the check, and was talking to clients in the waiting area. My mother confronted her, and said it's cool, she can just go through to the back room, and talk to the owner. The receptionist called the owner in whole bunch of arguments and bloody haggling for time in front of the clients. My father got paid in front of the clients. Good lol make the clients aware that the owner will try to dodge paying them. Signing people up for shares add-ons to an existing bill and hoping they don't notice the extra charges. Oh god. I used to work in retail and this was something my boss and managers always insisted that we do. I was a cashier, and I was explicitly instructed to have a sticker or a keychain or some other low cost item on hand, so I could add on that item to the customer's items without the customer noticing. The intent was to artificially increase the average IPS items per sale, which boosted our store sales stats relative to the other branches in the area. A lot of customers didn't notice, and if they did, we were instructed to be all loops. Sorry, I thought that item was yours. Let me remove it from your bill. I hated it. That was just the tip of the iceberg with them. They also made us sign up customers for a bullsh rewards program without their knowledge or consent. By getting their phone numbers or email addresses. If anyone ordered online from our store, we automatically grabbed their information and added them to our rewards program database too. Again artificially increase our stats it was slimy as hell and after a while i refused to do it best job i ever quit doing a legal sh to make 20 million dollars then getting caught and paying a 5 million dollars fine letting an employee go slash easing them out instead of addressing a situation they brought up listen we're gonna need you to go ahead and move your desk down to the basement not including wage info in the job posting at least post the range or minimum for the position it's shady to give dedicated, long-term employees a measly 2-3% annual raise, if any at all, while hiring less experienced people for the same, or higher, salary, than the experienced employee. It essentially punishes loyal employees, and they wonder why the recent generations tend to company hop more. No loyalty from the company, don't expect any from the employees. Consistently making salaried exempt employees work 10 plus hours over time a week in order to avoid hiring more staff, but at the same time using a 40 hour work week to calculate things like PTO. Oh, you're tired from working 55 to 60 hours this week, John Fest. Well, I have great news. You'll work another 55 next week, plus you're on call 24 over 7. Congress is immune to insider trading. Rocketing the price of stuff, and putting a sale. Sadly, people are stupid enough to fall for this. I forget which store it was, but they would hike prices, and have constant sales. They then decided that wasn't worth the effort and money, in advertising the sales and just marked everything down to the sale price, and called it a day. Their sales actually tanked, until they went back to the old system. People refused to buy the same merch at the same price, unless they were explicitly told they were getting a deal on it. Even when the regular price was absurdly overpriced to start with, I believe it was JCPenney. In Australia Subway claimed footlong was a trademark name, and not a suggestion of sizing. After many people pointed out their subs were well under a foot long, I'm pretty sure they got sued and had to actually make the foot long a foot long. Using a previous salary against you. Oh, you make $40,000. Well, we'll offer you $50,000. That's a 25% increase in pay. Your salary shouldn't be relative. It should be what the market value of the position is. If a job pays $75,000, don't pay me only fifty thousand dollars because i only currently make forty thousand dollars 
working when you are sick. I have heard stories of bosses forcing people to come in despite being extremely ill. Also I just wish that it would be mandatory schedule length of at least 2 weeks. If the hours are not the same every day, mine changes weekly and it's hard to plan anything. Uck, I know what you mean about scheduling. I worked at a grocery store that gave you your schedule on Friday and you'd have to wait to Friday to know if you worked Saturday or not. Absolutely absurd. I worked at a gas station that did this. We had a computer system for people to request off that would literally remove them from the schedule for that time period, so there was no way for the manager to schedule them. If they had asked off, the manager wouldn't give us a password for the computer system, saying it malfunctions all the time. So he prefers to do everything on paper. So every Friday, when the schedule came out, we had to double check that he hadn't scheduled us during times we couldn't work. He was constantly scheduling me to work during times I had class, despite telling me in my interview that he could work around my schedule. When I complained he tried to say that I should be a responsible adult and work, since school is only meant to prepare a person to work anyway. I not so politely informed him that I had no intention of being a gas station attendant at 60 like he was, and I would not, under any circumstances, skip class to work. Making you pay more for printing your own damn tickets at home, StubHub, Ticketmaster etc. Uck, StubHub is a den of thieves. Hire young people who are prepared and motivated, and enjoy the work. Give them 50 hours a week of work, no special overtime pay. Tell them it'll be back to normal at then end of the month, when the regular crunch is over. Repeat until near a deadline. Give them 80 hours a week, 7 days a week of crunch, to meet the deadline. Continue past deadline a little, while then return to regular hours of 50 hours. Repeat until your employees hate life, refuse to give references, when they quit to protect yourself legally. Normalize across the industry so nobody can complain too much, and sound credible. Using your employment as leverage, to keep your mouth shut. For example, a temp agency I worked through tried to deduct the cost of PPE from my paycheck. I told them that legally, employers need to provide PPE to their employees, not sell it to them. They threatened to fire me. I reported them to OSHA. They got fined, and had to reimburse everyone their $15 deduction for PPE. Temp agencies are effing scams. I really hate the temp agency route. So many places are going. When I was looking for jobs machining everywhere around here was either a temp position, or wanted some ungodly amount of experience. Needless to say I took a job in the semiconductor field, and will never be able to pay my student loans off. I worked for an electrical contractor that more than half the office staff was through a temp agency. 250 electricians. 20 normal office staff, 22 office temps, and most of those temps had been there 4 years. Shouldn't there be a limit to what defines a temp, and how could it be cheaper, to pay an agency $24 an hour to turn around, and pay the poor girl $12? Couldn't we offer the lady $16, make her happy, and cut the agency out of the loop after the initial obligation? Keeping temps on for a lot longer than temporary is sadly becoming a business practice all over. A company having a business model that relies on charging fees for breaking its own rules without justification for them. Looking at you credit one. Has a late payment fee, but refuses to add any kind of auto payment. In 2017. Takes 5 days to clear a normal payment. Pay 4 days before your bill is due. That's a late payment fee. Want your payment to clear earlier to avoid that fee. Pay an express payment fee. It's the same fee amount. Lordy. What a coincidence. I just finished paying off credit one. Never again. Online stores advertise their products at attractively lower prices, but you will never really be able to get the product for that price, because they will add extra charges somehow. Nominal weights and measures that don't match actual weights and measures. My company sells by the each, but each item has a nominal weight. We intentionally produce our product approximately 10% light, to save raw material costs. What's funny is in the steel pipe industry they do the opposite. A lot of pipe mills will sell you heavier walled pipe, to increase the cost of each joint. That sounds illegal as f. They're probably within the legally permitted margin of error. I've seen so many to name just one. Here's the worst I've seen. So, PCB are highly toxic. Highly carcinogenic stuff used mainly as coolant in power transformers. Heavy industries often have their own transformers, 
usually on the roof of their building. When these transformers get old, they need to be replaced, and the PCB need to be destroyed properly. However, doing this properly is very costly, so, a solution is to wait for a rainy day, then pour the PCB in the gutters on the roof of the heavy industries building, where the power transformers typically are. This way they disperse on the ground and noon is the wiser. Well, since then, laws were changed to make sure that all power transformers are labeled and tracked by the government to ensure their proper disposal. Still, sometimes a few older units get overlooked, and this is how I learned of this trick. The heavy industries building is in the middle of a large city, with kids playing nearby and all. F these Fs, you can contact OSHA or the EPA anonymously. You can. However they seem to have to catch them in the act of doing it. According to the officer I spoke with, fake promotions. There's a role you can apply for, that doesn't have any extra pay or benefits, in which you do the same work as a road above that, which is higher paid, in the hopes that eventually you'll be the next in line, to actually be, given that next position, except you won't, whenever you accept a job with the well for 6 months you'll be doing the lesser job, but after that it's gonna shift into the better job with extra pay spiel, keep applying for jobs during, that's 6 months and line up other options, when you get the inevitable well things aren't progressing as we hoped, but if you stay in the lesser job another 6 months then there'll be a real possibility, just say yes, things aren't progressing as we hoped, here's my letter of resignation, bye, just quit a job, because I was told I'd get a raise from 8.50, after they trained me, I made it very clear, that I couldn't make my bills long term on the training rate, trained me for 3 days, Two months later and still no raise, bye bye, as long as it has a title, I'm jumping on that, updating my resume with the new title, and then applying for companies that have a job on par with the new title. My brother-in-law did this, when he got promoted without being paid extra he worked for a few months, while looking for alternative jobs and sure enough a company offered him more than what his current company was offering. He told his boss about the offer, the boss told him that he would pay him what that company was offering. He told the company, the company offered even more, so he switched. Using unpaid intern as worker, they have the exact same tasks as everyone else. They work the same hours, even more because they think that, if they work more they will be noticed and hired, they won't. And it's rare, that their supervisor take the time, to teach them anything. They have to figure out things by themselves. Of course most struggle, and it's used as an excuse to not hire them, that sound like slavery with extra steps, no slaves have to be fed and bought, interns are cheaper, careful, deceptive, wording, up to 100 mbps internet speeds, means you get 5, 6 mbps, and up to 100 for a moment here and there, made with 100% chicken simply means, that real chicken was utilized as an ingredient at some point, it's like saying a bottle of wine is made with 100% organic cork, Sugar free, means less sugar per serving than the minimum we have to report, the top rated usually followed by the specific study, that ranked it best, did you know you can pay a company, to perform a study for you that's guaranteed to determine you're the best, add to that labeling things like 0% cholesterol, or free from saturated fats, on foods that would never normally contain, or be expected to contain those things, bonus points if it's something really unhealthy like boiled sweets, bought olive oil that had gluten free on it, who the f put sweet in olive oil, I need to get me some of this organic cork wine. Government contracting building a thing to specs, but not entirely up to full functionality, knowing the issues, that can slash will arise, doing nothing about it, and then make the government cut a whole different, and very profitable, contract to fix said problems, I do a lot of federal contracts. A lot of the waste to hear is, because procurement officers don't know WTF they are talking about. I have tried endlessly, to get spec right slash more cost effective slash more geared towards the application to no avail. In my experience the people working for the feds don't give a sh if it's right. I've been on the other side of some of those discussions. The vendor is sometimes very willing to bend over backwards, and help and accommodate. If only they can get some specific questions. Vendor. So what are the specs of this process, that you interact with, me, I can't tell you, it's not in scope, v, but if we know, that we can better design this solution, to mesh with your overall process flow, and possibly upsell, let's be honest, m, right, 
but it's not in the contract, so we can't talk about it. Contracting team won't let us. Modding the contract would delay moving into production with this solution at least 6 months. I agree that a more holistic solution would be better, but our budget only allows for what is in the contract, and we can't convince the higher ups to spend more, so they would prefer spending more in the future when the rest of it breaks. Next question. V. Okay. About paragraph 3 subsection C. It says fiddle the dingler bearers are you sure you want them fiddled, and not fondled? M. Look, we thought fondled was better, but the contracting team said we have to use fiddle, because of some government rule. I'm not the expert on contracting, I'm the technical guy, we can live with fiddle, but we aren't happy about it, but that's what they required, and while it will cause some disruptions and some of our people will have to work overtime it won't cause a catastrophic failure, so we just have to go with it. Next question. ETC ETC etc. Convenience fees for paying online. Instead of mailing in a check slash money order, are you fine kidding me? You should be giving me a discount for saving you labor. Costs of processing my payment. Yes tell that to Ticketmaster. They have convenience fee, processing fee, service fee, all kinds of fees. My mortgage company just upped the convenience fees for paying online $10 for an online payment and $15 for an over the phone payment. Yet automatic payments are free. No thanks. I will continue to write a check once a month, put a stamp on it, and mail it, just to be that pain in the A customer, and have a cancelled check copy for proof of payment. I don't trust my mortgage company as far as I could throw a cheese or cake underwater in a heavy undertow. And Reefy isn't on the radar right now for a lot of reasons. As far as I could throw a cheese or cake underwater in a heavy undertow. You're a poet. Comcast's pricing strategy, where they raise the price an absurd amount from one month to the next and just hope customers aren't paying attention or too passive to complain, called Comcast Friday to try and lower my bill. I tell them I don't want the phone. Any of the premium channels other than HBO, give me regular internet instead of blast, and the I don't need the DVR. They come back with packages that are $20 to $50 more than what I'm currently paying. Let me get this straight. I drop STARZ, Showtime, Cinemax, phone line, go to a slower internet package, and give up the DVR box and I pay more. How does this make sense? And their likely oligopoly prevents you from leaving. In certain markets it may be a full on monopoly. Never sign up for automatic payments. I would rather pay the bill manually every month, so I can see when the bill changes. Yup. They've tried it to my parents over and over, and they call up and say, Oh this is higher than last month. Why is it? Oh we had to increase th ok we don't want it anymore. Take us off after this month. Ok we've returned you to your normal rate. Lol this seriously happens at least once a year. Literally anything a corporation does that they can be fined for is taken into account as a business expense. If it's cheaper to pay an illegal dumping fine than it is to change the way they process waste nothing will be done to stop the illegal dumping. Can confirm. My company didn't want to encrypt its computers and just pay the fine every year they didn't do it until the fine got astronomically huge. Then they rushed through encryption and killed like 200 computers costing themselves about $1,000 per machine. I've learned businesses are not smart. They just set things up so that the circumstances are inconsequential when they make bad choices. People give no fs about your luggage or parcel. They get dropped, thrown around every day behind the closed door. Especially heavy items. I remember looking out the plane window at the luggage handlers. I do not recommend this. In Birmingham, US, they were dropping boxes kicking things half-heartedly to push them in, acting like junior high kids given chores they don't want to do, their orange vests hung shoddily from their shoulders as they shuffled around on the tarmac. Many hours later we arrived in Japan, the luggage handlers had white gloves, seriously, signaled each other in their transport carts, signaled and stopped even when no one seemed near, really took their jobs seriously. I don't suggest nothing ever gets lost in Japan and I know Japan isn't perfect, but the difference was striking. Japan isn't perfect, that's true. They did have a train that left 20 seconds early last week. It made world news. Getting a lot more common in my industry is hiring interns all the time. After their few months of training they get replaced by next batch. 
With the shortage of jobs, and need for experience, many people fresh out of college, will happily work for free to gain experience, I like, and paid interns cannot replace hired workers, that might be illegal. There was a post about things your employer don't want the public to know, and I was amazed to see people say how common it was for a woman to be hired, in the tech industry mainly, basically to flirt with potential male business clients. The aim was to make them nervous slash uncomfortable, so the company would have the upper hand in negotiations. Wouldn't exactly call that ethical. Found what I was referring to, it was on r slash confession. A friend of mine lives out in LA and recently tried to convince me to get a job out there. I work at a dispensary out in Tucson currently, so I hopped onto Craigslist to look at dispensary jobs out in LA. Just to see what the options were, every single position I found specified looking for female workers female bud tender wanted. Female 420 model needed. It was really weird. I work in inventory at my current job, and I'm more knowledgeable about the back end more logistical workings of the company, but none of the jobs seemed to be looking for anyone like that. They just wanted someone cute. Selling customer data. Some degree of false advertising. My food never looks like it does on the menu. My internet is never as fast as advertised. The contractor never finishes when he says he will. Hire a batch of temps as temp to hire with the supposed idea being that you'll be offered a permanent position at the end of the temp period with satisfactory performance. Set performance standards that are borderline physically impossible to meet after the end of the temp period. Be like sorry guys can't hire you on because you didn't meet our performance standards. Hire a new batch of temps. A plastics company I temp for did this at their injection molding plant. The whole complex was run with basically a skeleton crew of company workers slash admin with a constantly rotating batch of temps making up the bulk of the workforce. What would be the benefit of this? Wouldn't they just have a bunch of constantly less than competent workers? You hire temps to do low skill repetitive labor work, such as manual packing. Temp workers are cheaper, even with the extra fees going to the temp org, you can have them do risky work and cycle them, whereas a long term employee might get a repetitive injury after years bending to pack boxes, and you don't have, edit, spelling, to deal with them. Sexual harassment case, call the agency, and have them replaced. Ok so this is becoming really common in my neck of the woods, basically a company needs someone to fill a role. Instead of giving them a job and all the perks like paid holidays etc they instead hire you as a contractor. This means you still have to play by their rules as to when they want you at but you get none of the perks besides your wage. No sick days, no holidays nothing. Companies that stifle competition slash innovation by buying smaller companies just to stop what the smaller company is doing. Add to that companies will lobby the government in order to create barriers to entry. A wage theft trumps all other forms of theft in the USA, yet is hardly ever enforced. It steals $8.8 .8 billion from lower wage workers a year. I would hope it goes without saying theft from your workers is unethical. Posting a job announcement and conducting interviews for a job you already know who you're going to hire. Cutting people's hours just enough to not be considered full time. So they don't have to give you benefits. Those bosses are true pieces of sh**. And I happen to know a few of them. Student loans in the US little to no approval process point they just give it. High interest rates. Refuse to settle. Can't be discharged in bankruptcy. They follow people well into their 40s. Limiting their buying power for houses, cars, other stuff. 17 to 18 year olds have no idea what they are signing because we conveniently provide them no education on the processor until they have to decide whether to sign or not requiring experience for entry-level jobs hiring more part-time workers instead of giving hourly workers slightly more hours to avoid giving them benefits my former boss did that and we eventually found out her christmas bonus was based on how much she saved on wages benefits etc my first job was one step lower than this sh i was working at a printing press shop because i had some experience from working at the one at my high school get fired eight weeks in given some bullshit excuse about me not being good enough even though i found and corrected more errors than the pressman i was working under then the lady at the front desk that i had befriended bumped into my outside of work a few days later and explained that they fire that position every nine weeks 
so they get a full-time worker, but never have to pay benefits or unemployment. The business is now closed, though probably due to the shrinking business of printing things, instead of just their shtai business practices and paid internships. It's a great opportunity to learn. Learn what? The meaning of slavery. You work like someone that is hired, but for a shorter period, they don't bother to teach you anything cause you will pick up as you go. Even better when you don't even work in the area you wanted to get the internship. Hey, you studying the law right? I have a great opportunity for you to work as my secretary. Planned obsolescence. Nepotism. Can you get me to the top of the post? Father.